What's going on, brothers? What is going on? It is your dude, Mr. International Passport, here again for yet another future classic live stream. Um, press a one in the live stream chat if y'all can hear me loud and clear. How is my audio? How is my audio? Mayday, mayday, check one, two, three, check one, two, three. Who's here in the building? Who is here? Okay. How's the audio, brothers? How's the audio? Who's here, man? Who's here? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Before the who's here, bruv? Press on one in, in the live stream chat if you're here. Am I live? Am I live right now? I should be live. What's going on? Let me check my settings. I am live. Who's here? Come on, man. Press the one in the chat if you can hear me. Tensuke in the building. Awesome. Who else is here? How's the audio? How's the audio? Check one, two. Mike, check one, two. Awesome. Awesome. So let's get straight into it, man. Brothers, um, welcome to a future classic live stream. I'm IP International Passport. Long time passport, bro. Long time traveler. Was a passport, bro, before uh, the passport movement was a thing. Um, when you come in tonight, please like the video. Uh, please show some support. Please hit the super chats. Please hit the uh, obviously the uh, the PayPal donation. Join the Patreon for intel into foreign women, and of course, uh, cop the merch too. And book your IT consultations via the kindly link in the description box below and within the link tree to help you get into IT. Why is that important? The West is becoming more crazier and crazier. All right. You must be in an industry where you can get paid, okay, and work remotely. And IT is that best industry. Some of y'all, if you're serious about this, you gotta get into IT, okay, and travel and 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 meet beautiful women, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The West is over. The women in the West are horrible, and that includes America, UK, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Get up the West, okay? IT will help you do so. So we're here for two new countries, Italy and Bahamas. I've got a very special guest here called Mr. D. D, how are you doing, bruv? You good? I'm doing pretty good, my brother and yourself. I'm doing fantastic, bro. Thank you, D, for your time. Much appreciate it, bro. So, D, let's get straight into it, man. So give us, give us a brief intro about who you are, where you're from, and anything special about you. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm just a guy from Queens, New York, to be honest. I moved down to Florida some years ago, get away from the snow and the cold. Uh, I jumped into uh, the HVAC industry, which has been pretty good. Um, I plan on jumping into a few different industries and getting as much as I can under the belt. Um, I actually will soon be trying to join one of your uh, your IT classes, you and Theo. Try to jump to the next level, you know? Awesome, mate. Head out, brothers. Head out. You know, if you're serious about this, brothers, if you're serious about this, you gotta, you gotta, okay, you, you gotta get your passport and get into IT. IT is the way out of the matrix, get into IT. So let's get straight into it, right? We got Bahamas and Italy that the brothers are gonna break down for us, man. Um, two interesting countries. So let's start with uh, Bahamas first, bro. So, brother, where were you in the Bahamas? I was in uh, Nassau. Um, typically, when I when I do go to the Bahamas, I'm a I'm a cruise ship guy, so uh, I'd rather go in on the boat than to fly in. So usually, I'll go in on um, Royal Caribbean or Carnival. And then I'll come into uh, Nassau and I'll pretty much just hang around, do my thing and explore the island from there. But that's pretty much how I get there. Awesome. Awesome, brother. Uh, and for Italy, you were in Venice, right? Yeah, I was in Venice. I stayed at a traditional uh, bed and breakfast in San Marco and um, and I enjoyed my time there. Awesome, brother. And, and how did that, how much did that cost you, the bed and breakfast? Was that Airbnb or was that hotel? Uh, it is a bit, it is a B and B, but it's more in the traditional. It's kind of one of the the OG bed and breakfasts before Airbnb became a thing. It was a nice little spot, um, somewhere in the middle of San Marco. I've actually been trying to find it again because I visited there right before COVID popped off. Um, but I've been kind of having some trouble uh picking it back up. But yeah, it was a nice little spot. Um, probably like a four story building. 
uh, kind of cozy, had a little veranda and everything in it. Um, my host was, was very polite, very respectful. Uh, I enjoyed their time there as well. And um, yeah, it was somewhere in San Marco, which I do encourage the, the bros to go ahead and visit if they can get an Airbnb out there. It was kind of a central location for everything. How much did it cost you, uh, your, your, your accommodation in Venice uh, on a daily basis or weekly basis, if you remember? Uh, it was about 60 some odd and some change a night, but that is not the typical price range. That's why I did mention that it was more of a traditional B&B. So it was a little bit cheaper. Uh, your typical Airbnb will probably run you between probably starting around $200 a night going on up, depending on your location. So whatever part of the, uh, the city of Venice that you're at it can get up to probably like $800 a night, uh, again, depending on your location and what's around you. Awesome, brother. Now, switching it back to um, uh, uh, Nassau, Bahamas, brother, accommodation-wise, where were you staying? Was it Airbnb or was it hotel? So I've never flown into uh, the Bahamas just because I'm super big on the cruises. I love taking the boat out there, enjoying the amenities and stuff that the ship has to offer. Plus, that's how I uh, like to meet the new people and whatnot. Um, so I take the boat ride out there. And I believe the last time I paid for a cruise, which was also right before COVID had popped off, it was probably around five to six hundred dollars. Uh, it was it was pretty decent. I think I went somewhere around March. Wow. And was that was that for a whole month or was that for one week? That, that amount of money? No, that was for six days. Yeah, six days. Six days, uh, seven nights. Oh, wow. Awesome. So you were actually in, in a big boat. Obviously, you had your own room there. <laughs> but can you, I, I've, never, I've never actually done that before, right? You know, taking a cruise. So I'm guessing you have your own room. You have your own kitchen with inside the room and your, and your own bathroom and, and, you know, a toilet inside the room. How does it work when it comes to structure, brother? Uh, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen. Interested, brother. Break it down for us. Yeah, so there's all different type of cabin styles and whatnot. Um, they have all these different packages that they can go from the cheapest, which is down below in the belly of the boat, all the way up to uh, the top deck where you can pretty much see everything. I think the first, uh, it starts with the cabins down, uh, down below. They don't have no windows. Those are probably the cheapest. Um, you get what you pay for at that point. If you just want to get on the boat just to get there, you can buy those. Uh, you'll find tickets for like $50 starting point. Um, I, pre I preferably wouldn't recommend that just because it isn't the best stay. It's a little cramped. Um, I prefer above deck, at least with a window or a balcony. Depending on the package, you'll probably pay a few hundred dollars or more. But I think it's, uh, I think it's worth it. You do have a bathroom. Um, you have a little bed in there, depending on how big of a room you get, if you uh, bring someone else with you or you have multiple guests, multiple friends, uh, things like that. You do, if you go for the upper packages, you do get, um, you get a kitchenette, you get a little bar, a small little bar, you get a nice little kitchenette, you get more space. Um, and it's not too much. You just get a little more breathing room, I'll say that. Amazing. Amazing, brother. So... Um, okay. Now the people in, in, in the cruise, right. I'm guessing these are high value, rich people. I'm guessing probably there's a lot of beautiful women there as well, <laughs> but I break it down for the kind of people in the cruise, brother. So, so to be honest, man, you, you meet all types of people from all aspects of life. Uh, most of the cruises that I've taken have been from Florida. I've only taken one cruise, um, from New York. That was about it. But most of my cruises come from, uh, they dep uh, depart from Jacksonville or uh, Miami or Orlando. And you, you literally meet people from lower class up to, you know, the top tier and stuff like that. Um, everybody kind of looks the same because everybody dresses for the vacation. They're in t-shirts, shorts, sandals, stuff like that of that nature and whatnot. You really don't know what someone does until you go ahead and get to talking people, uh, talking to people. But that's what I like about the uh, the cruise ship though. I'm a, I'm a pretty sociable guy. So I pretty much, um, I make friends kind of easily. So I'll just go ahead and talk to somebody at the bar or at the restaurant. Um, 
the cruise ships, uh, they like to have these little events. They'll have a little dress up night. You'll have a nice restaurant and stuff in there too. Uh, they have a hot breakfast early in the morning. You can run into people too there. But I've met people that made twenty thousand dollars a a year annually, and I've met some some multi millionaires that want to ship that just wanted to take a little break and and uh, hang out with their family. Amazing, amazing the breakdown so far. So, brother, next question for you right now. Let's switch, let's switch it back to Venice, Italy. So, brother, um, when you were in in Venice, Italy, from what you observed, from what you saw, who runs the country, brother? Is it white Italian uh, people? Or is there an external shadowy force? Is it the Chinese? Is it the Americans? Who's in control of the country, brother, of Italy? From what I saw on the street level, it was the the white Italians. Okay. Definitely the, uh, the white Italians. And, brother, right, when it came to uh, uh, Nassau, Bahamas, who's in control, brother, of that country? Obviously, Bahamas is a majority black country. So are yes. black people in control of the Bahamas or is it white people or is it, is it other races of people? Who runs the country of Bahamas, bro? I say, and I could be wrong, but majority wise, I'd say the blacks, although there is a, a huge mixed population of people that are there. Um, but most of those I say are tourists. You do have a lot of expats that, um, that have purchased land out there, which is actually pretty easy for us to do. Uh, it isn't hard at all. It, I, I'd say that I just look into which, uh, what area or what region of the Bahamas you're purchasing land. Um, and with that being said as well, most expat Americans or most regular Americans that buy land out there, they're pretty much buying farmland. So that kind of piqued my interest too, because I'm like, well, what are they doing with this farmland? How are they flipping it? How are they making money off of it and such? Awesome. Awesome, brother. So now... Um... When it comes to you being a Western black man, brother, right? How were you treated in Italy, brother, as a Western black man? Now, I'm hearing Italians are racist. I heard that Italy is a racist country. You've been there. I have not been there. So in your time in, in Venice, Italy, brother, um, how do they treat you as a Western black man? Break it down for us. Bet. So I can only speak on Venice because that was the only place that I went to. But as far as Venice was concerned, I was treated fine. I actually went um, with my ex, my ex, who was also black. And um, we were actually treated perfectly fine. Everybody was super nice, um, believe it or not. They were super nice. They were respectful. At the time, I was learning um, Italian, so I kind of knew a little bit. So I would go ahead and try to actively speak it. And I will say this, once you try to actively engage in their language, I mean, their hostility and respect just goes, it goes up the roof. They get super engaged with you. Um, they're all smiles and everything else. And to be honest, they're just curious. Now, with that being said, I did notice when I was there that there was a certain presence of um, immigrants into Venice. And I think most of them were coming from African countries. So unfortunately, they were over there stealing and doing certain things. So they, they had a bad outlook on the, on the community. So pretty much if they seen you, if you were a Western, uh, if you were a Western brother, they pretty much kind of, they kind of looked at you almost the same, but as soon as you spoke and they heard your accent, their mood completely changed. And I guess it's because they figured maybe you would try to steal from them or cause them some type of grief in that manner. Interesting you say that, brother, because I had a stream a couple of weeks ago in regards to Hungary, or not Hungary, yeah, Hungary, and I think it was Hungary, but it was it, it was definitely a European country, and the brother was there, right? He met an, an an Italian shop owner, okay, and the the Italian shop owner, right, you know, started being aggressive towards him, but when when the brother spoke and it was K it was American, he completely changed, and you know what? He said sorry to him. Say that he said sorry to him, saying that oh, I'm sorry, I was being rude to you. I'm sorry, I was being aggressive to you. I thought you were African. I was like, what? What? <laughs> yeah, that's how they knew that. Yeah, that's how they knew that. It's crazy, bro. So, so essentially, brother, they they distinguish between a Western black person and an African black person. If you're a Western black person, you are good in the eyes of Italian. If you're an African black person, oh no, 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 no. Is that the case, bro? Keep it stack. So to keep it a hundred, that's that's exactly the case, man. And um, I mean, some of them I've actually met because uh, we did a lot of shopping there. 
And some of them can actually tell, depending on how you dress and everything and your mannerisms, they can almost tell that you're either you're from the Western world, either you're from the UK or you're from America. Um, and I actually came in contact uh, when I was walking with my ex. We were walking through, um, there was a little plaza where they had uh, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, uh, American Eagle, uh, and a couple other spots that, I, that I'm familiar with over there. So we decided to take a look around and I actually ran into uh, a few immigrants there. And they started speaking, they started speaking a little bit Italian to me at first. And I was like, you know, I don't, don't really understand too much, yada, yada, yada. And as soon as I said that, and I guess they realized I was American, they, the, the brothers got super aggressive, man. I had to, I had to kind of tell them like, yo, chill, bro. Like, you know, calm down, man. I don't got no money for you. This, this, and the third. And then, you know, he kind of, he kind of followed us for a couple minutes until I went ahead and, you know, told my girl to step back for a second. I went over there and talked to him alone and pretty much just told him to go on about his day. But that day rubbed me off the wrong way. And it was unfortunate that they're, they're making that presence over there. So, Unfortunately, I can kind of understand why they, they have a certain look on uh, on the Africans there. Wow. Wow. So now, brother, uh, back to the South Bahamas. So how are you as a Western black man <laughs> treated in the South Bahamas? But even though it's, it's an overall black country, you know that in some cases, if you're Western, they may look at you weird. I've heard that for some African countries, some Caribbean countries, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So... Um, break it down for us, bro. How 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 we treated as a Western Pine and Bahamas? So I was actually treated fine. Um, I mean, my trips to the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and the all the other islands in the Bahamas and stuff like that. As long as you come off humble, you know, you're you're perfectly fine out there. The problem is that most Americans come over there with the uh, stereotypical American attitude. And that's all shades, colors, and races and ethnic groups that come over there. They they sometimes come with that attitude, and that's not what the locals like. So if you come over there humble, friendly, and stuff like that, you're you're perfectly fine. I've talked to the locals plenty of times, and um, I come to them, you know, with respect and and with a friendly tone and everything else. And they they're pretty open to talk to you. They're, in fact, they're kind of curious and whatnot. They want to know why you come out, especially if you kind of if you go off the beaten path a little bit. They're even more curious because most tourists stay pretty much by Atlantis and you know on certain um, resorts and whatnot. But overall, it, it was a good experience for me. Oh, I will say this though. I will say this though. The the men can be a little aggressive if you got a lady friend with you or whatnot. So I will keep that in mind. But, but, uh, can can you break that down a bit further? What, what do you mean if you if you got a lady friend, they they go after the lady or just break it down for us? Yeah, so so pretty much the the guys they they have a kind of culture over there where uh, where the dudes they they catcall to to chicks and whatnot. Um, sometimes they'll just say they'll whisper or they'll say hey hey or they'll whistle, you know. But in certain cases they'll I guess if they if they if you look like a dude that's not really I don't know if you really don't command a presence they'll try to approach a woman like right there directly in front of you. So what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 it can get a little disrespectful uh, uh, in certain areas. Um, but I say, I'll say this, though. The, if you're with a chick and she's walking around like she's modeling for Playboy or something like that, then they're going to be more aggressive towards her just because just because of how she's walking around and stuff. So but like, even even the modest chicks, they still get kind of cat cold. It's just a certain level of aggressiveness depending on, you know, where you're at and, and what your your woman or your lady friend is wearing. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and uh, we'll touch upon that uh, later on when we get to the woman part, brother. So next question for you, brother, is now in terms of investments. So uh, back to Italy. So in, in your time in Venice, Italy, brother, from your observations, and if you can't, if you can't answer the question, it's all good. Did you look at any sort of investment opportunities, any sort of like ideas for business for past purposes that we can do in Italy? Yeah, I checked it out. I didn't do an extensive uh, search into the matter, but I was curious about renting out there. And um, it it's almost depending. So depending on where you live at, right? Well, not depending on where you live at, but depending on where you're looking at. They have some properties that are in certain areas that aren't ideal for local investments. So they'll sell them for cheap 
like if they're having agricultural problems or if it's a uh, if it's some type of structure on a hill that they don't deem stable enough or something like that those properties go for cheap um but all the other properties as far as renting uh i'd say what like a two bedroom is probably twelve hundred dollars a month around that time from what the locals told me and three bedrooms are probably fifteen sixteen hundred a month or averaging between like thirteen to sixteen hundred dollars a month and the studios, studios and one bedrooms are somewhere around like six to eight hundred a month. So, and Americans can go over there and buy property pretty much without too much restriction or red tape. So it is relatively easy. Uh, you just have to pretty much find your realtor that you can um, that you can trust, because there are cases uh, from what one of my hosts told me that they will some people will try to scam Americans because they know they don't know that much. So they'll try to mm. raise the price on you and whatnot. So it is crucial to find a realtor that you can develop a relationship with and trust that'll, you know, show you the ins and outs of buying over there. Okay, brother, get get closer to your mic, brother. You but using you there when it comes to your voice. What about for Bahamas, any sort of uh, business opportunities for passport bros? Yeah, 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 definitely. Like I said, going back to the farmland thing, there seems to be a lot of Westerners purchasing farmland. Um, I haven't looked into how much they're making off of return and buying that farmland, but the fact that, you know, most expats and, and whatnot are going over there and purchasing it, it is something definitely interesting to look into. Uh, as far as renting over there, I think it was about $600 for like a one bedroom. It's not that expensive uh, to to purchase. The same thing as uh, Italy. We don't have to go through too many hoops to purchase over there. Also, they're very tax friendly. There's no income tax. And I think they exclude a few other taxes that we would be used to in the Western world. So as far as an initial investment, I think it would be pretty easy uh, financially to get into that arena. You just have to, again, you have to find another realtor that you can trust. Um, Get a look at the lay of the land, make sure you know where you're picking is a good spot to invest in and build on, and then you can go from there. But as it is right now, from what I found out, it seems like a pretty good investment if you're interested in looking in the Bahamas. Awesome, brother. Awesome. So now when it comes to people, Italian people, brother, how are Italian people like? Are they introverts? Are they extroverts? Are they kind people? Are they angry people? What's your observation as to how Italian people are, brother, from uh, personality-wise, please, overall? The Italians were pretty cool, man. Um, <laughs> they were, they were, they, they're pretty passionate. I will, I will say that they, they, they are passionate. Um, I'm thinking. So as soon as I got off the plane, uh, pretty much most of them were. They were introverts as far as as you're walking through and you're going about your way. No one's going out of their way to like, you know, wave and say hi or anything like that. But the moment you spoke to someone, they were willing to speak to you. Um, and again, if you know any bit of Italian, that helps tremendously. And um, they're just super excited if you do get to speak Italian to them. They're even more excited to help you out and they'll work with you that much more. Uh, they were pretty much polite. I think I saw one guy at the airport when we went when I went to um, exchange some uh, exchange to euros. He was probably the only person, to be honest, that whole trip that looked like he was having a bad day. And I mean, he's working in the airport dealing with hundreds of people, so I get it. Uh, outside of him, everybody was pretty good. From the people that I talked to on the street, the uh, the shop owners. Um, at the Bacaros, the, the the restaurants and bars and stuff like that, everybody was super polite, super respectful. They were friendly, um, very social. If you if you talk to them, if you made the first move, they were they were pretty much open and respectful, both men and women alike. So I, I liked it. I had a good time talking to them. Awesome, brother. What about Bahamas people? How are they, brother? Uh, personality wise. <laughs> Yeah, the Bahamians were cool too, man. They were they were cool. As long as you came to them, you know, respectful and everything else, they opened you with um uh came to you with open arms and whatnot, welcomed you in. Uh they were they were super friendly and everything else. Um my experience there was was great as well. The the locals, uh even the staff, um, 
at like the hotels and stuff like that that I did visit, they were all pretty friendly. Um, they were open. I say uh, a couple, a few locals did tell me that depending on where you go, just to be careful as a tourist because they do have their their local gangs and whatnot that are in the area, but they typically don't bother nobody. Um, but you gotta use your common sense about you when you go too far off the beaten path. Um, just use your street sense and you know don't put yourself in the uh, in a peculiar situation. But for the most part. Everybody's respectful. They will give you, I'll say this though, if you're not used to stares and whatnot, because they will, for the most part, know that you're not a local, they'll just stare at you, kind of, you know, look at you like another tourist, or they'll be a little bit curious as to why you're there, depending on, you know, how far out you ventured. But if you're okay with getting looks and stuff like that, as long as you have a smile on your face and you're you're um, open and friendly, yeah, they're all good, bro. You don't really have to worry about too much. Awesome, awesome, brother. So, next question for you, uh, switching back to Italy. So, how did you meet people and make friends there, brother? Uh, uh, what's your advice for passports who are interested in Italy? How would they meet people and make friends there, brother, in Italy, brother? Um, break it down for us. All right, so, Ben, so <laughs> I'm actually the one out of, out of my groups. I'm, I'm the guy that will go up to anybody, uh, it doesn't bother me. If I see somebody and, and I and I look at them and I think that they could be open to a chat, I'll literally just go up to them and ask them like, hey, uh, sorry to bother you. You know, my name's such and such. I'm just trying to find, you know, a good place to eat. Um, you know, any places to get some wine or yada, yada, yada. I'll find an opening uh, question to go ahead and, you know, introduce myself and, and get into the mix that way. And for me, that works every time. Um, so as far as uh, Italy, there was um, St. Mark's Square, which we visited, which was uh, very popular with tourists. Um, they had these bars and restaurants, which they call Bacaros. And so you'll find all types of people that are visiting there. Um, I mean, all different types of nationalities, ethnicities, uh, races, and everything alike. Um, you'll find all of that there. Um, and so I usually just go up to them, I ask them like, hey, I ask them a simple question. Um, I have a smile on my face and then they go ahead and respond. They're pretty open. They're pretty social. And then they'll try to give you like tips and tricks on what to do in the area, places to go, places to see. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much uh, a way to meet you, to meet the locals and whatnot. Just, just be willing to talk. If you're an introverted person, it may be a little challenging for you because being a little extrovert will, will play best in your favor. So if you are introvert, I'd say just step on out there. Don't be afraid to, to, to miss the shot and you'll be fine. You'll be just fine. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Um, I'm, I'm guessing Italians speak English in general. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they spoke English. Um, certain places, the, the English was a little, it was a little broken. It, it wasn't as strong, so that's where some of my Italian kind of kicked in and whatnot. But for the most part, you'll 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 do you'll do just fine. You can you can get around and figure things out, and you'll be okay. Awesome, brother. So now, brother, uh, in terms of uh, the Bahamas, how did you meet people and make friends there, brother, in Bahamas? I wish you best of possible balls to do so. Hey, same trick, man. I just walk up to them <laughs> and I say, yo, hey, how you doing? Don't mean to bother you. You know, I'm such and such. Uh, I was just looking for this, looking for that. I'll put, uh, I'll say or ask that with a smile on my face. And then um, typically when I smile, they usually smile back and it opens up the conversation and they're pretty friendly about it. Me, I usually go for the women because uh, in my experience, the women are typically more open to having a conversation especially if you smile um but the guys are the guys are also cool too as well so i usually start because again i like to go in on the cruise ships i'll start right where you are the cruise ship docks right at the port and then as i venture out and whatnot into nassau um if i'm in a certain area where i'm actually looking for something i'll just literally pick someone out the crowd and i'll go up to them um, but I'll say this though, Nassau is really packed with a lot of tourists uh, and everything else. So sometimes I'll go to a tourist and I'll be like, hey, 
you know, uh, sorry to bother you again. Uh, my name is such and such, and like, I'm looking for a certain spot. You know, I know you don't look like you're from here, if you don't mind me saying that. So where do you think is a good spot for someone like me as a visitor or a tourist to go to? And then that's when they'll tell me, and then I'll ask them where they're from. I met people from, um, I've, in the Bahamas, I met people from Italy, Austria, Germany, uh, a lot of people from the UK. I met people from Canada. I met a couple people from Australia. Uh, I met some chicks from Japan that were out there. I mean, literally, there's like so many different countries that are visiting the Bahamas on a daily basis. And then from there, sometimes, uh, depending on if I feel in their vibe or not, yo, I'll tell them to come out, tag along with them. Or when I go with my friends, I'll tell them like, hey, if you want to come along with us, your group with our group, we can go ahead and explore together. And that usually turns out into my favor as well. Oh, no, but I like doing that as well, where you meet new people from different countries that you hang out on that day or one hour, two hours, going, going with them to a particular place. I, I, I do that too, brother. So good stuff, brother. I can tell you're very social. I, but I, I know you mentioned Japanese chicks, brother, right? So what the Japanese chicks she met there, brother? Chicken for brothers and chicken for you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> They were, they were, they were very much um, checking for brothers. I, I, I'll say that uh, the ones that I met, I met them actually on the cruise ship. Those were the first ones that I met. They were on the cruise ship, and um, we ran into each other. So Carnival has, um, they have a ship that's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a party ship. I mean, me personally, I probably wouldn't go on it again because it, it just gets annoying after time. There's too many drunk people all over the place and whatnot. But the time that I took that boat, um, they had a little club inside the actual ship. And so uh, I had went into the club and whatnot. And again, I'm, I'm very sociable. I love to dance. I'm that, I'm that brother that will go in there to a spot and I'm going to dance. I, I didn't come here to sit up on the wall. And so these Asian chicks actually see me dancing. And so they kind of gave looks. I seen them do the whole, you know, look, smile and turn away, which was kind of cute. I'm not even on front. It was kind of cute. They were playing the whole interested shy bit. And so I was like, okay. And then they actually came up. I was, I was with someone else too. And they actually walked up to us and introduced themselves. And, um, and then we had a conversation from there and uh, they showed high interest. And pretty much they were they were hanging with us in and out the trip, um, off and on and whatnot, especially when we got to, got back to the boat, they would link back up with us and hang out and uh, and everything else. Matter of fact, I actually got a um I actually still follow one of the girls on on IG. I can send you her picture just so you can kind of see what she looked like. Yes, please, bro. Yes, please. Let's <laughs> go. Fantastic, man. That was the brother. So um but I'm guessing that they speak English in Bahamas, right? Uh, that's okay. That's enough. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, there's a, uh, I'll say, oh, also I'll say with the Bahamas too, as well. Um, you do have to be careful about, cause they'll try to, they'll try to get tourists and whatnot with the prices. Uh, especially for travel. So for the brothers that do visit the Bahamas, if they fly in, I would re definitely recommend staying at a resort. Um, Atlantis. So pretty much everything is pricey, right? Ex expect to spend some money when you go there. Um, but it's definitely worth staying at the Atlantis. You have all types of restaurants. Uh, you have your bars there. For those people that want to go get a drink, you have all your amenities and everything within walking distance. If you do decide to visit any of the uh, other locations inside the city, you'll have to take a taxi or you'll have to take a uh, a bus or something like that. About the taxi we'll get are expensive. To, sorry, bro. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that, bro. We'll get to that. I asked you. Uh, oh, okay, language, my bad, my bro. bad. So you're going too fast there, bro. Wait, uh, English, uh, is English enough to speak in the Bahamas or have you got to learn the language? Oh, no, yeah. English is just fine, man. English is just fine. You'll get around just fine with just English. Okay, awesome, bro. i got a super chat. Hold on. Shout out to Mr. Sam Combo for the support. Thank you, brother. Uh, being curious about Italy, nice to see someone speaking on it. Salute. Thank you, bro, for the support. Sam, much appreciated, bro. So, next question for you, brother, is transportation. So, in Italy, brother, how does a passport move around Italy? Is it Uber? 
Is it a uh, subway? Is it buses? Is it is it train? How did you move around? And how what's the best way to move around? Break it down for us, please. All right, so bet. Um, check your IG IP. I had sent those uh, pictures over to you. But so in Venice, I literally walk everywhere. Me and my uh. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, yeah, Probably. that's that's and she was with a friend, but that's typically what they look like. They they're pretty they're pretty attractive. No. Hold on, bro. But you know she's Korean, right? She's Korean, bro. But it don't matter, bro. It don't matter. She's Korean. And but you tell me she's checking for brothers. Yeah, yeah. Uh she was very much so. Okay, this is good, man. So, brother, carry, carry on the uh, transportation, brother. How, actually, break it down for us, bro. Yeah, so when you go to Venice, Italy, um, like I said, I stayed in San Marco, um, which was pretty much like the centralized point throughout the whole city. I walk, we, me and my ex walked the entire city of San Marco uh, within like a couple days or whatnot. You don't, you don't really need any other transportation uh, besides your feet. But if you want to travel to the other islands, you can take, um, you can take boats or gondolas. You can take the gondolas throughout the actual city, um, through the little riverways. And there's a, uh, there's another boat too. So the gondolas can get a little expensive, just because most of those are used by the tourists. So you'll be probably paying like somewhere between like 60 to 80 dollars or um, excuse me, 60 to 80 pounds, uh, depending on, you know, how far you're trying to go and which way you go. There is another boat that's called the uh, things called the Trigetto, and it's a little bit cheaper. It's a bigger boat that fits more people. It's not as fancy, but it'll get you where you got to go for like three dollars, three to four dollars, something like that. Um, so that's pretty much the typical way to get around is by boat and ferry. Okay, okay, brother. Um, interesting. Okay, and brother, what about Bahamas? Uh, transportation, how, how, does one, how does one move around, brother? As a expert, bro, you definitely need to rent a car. Um, again, one of the pros for taking the cruise ship, uh, is um, you really don't need to rent a car for anything because you're you're on the ship. But if you fly in, unless you unless you want to travel somewhere or you want to go further into the city and whatnot. But if you fly in, if you fly into the islands, I definitely encourage someone to rent a vehicle just because, again, the taxis can get expensive and um, they will definitely try to they'll, they'll try to pull the wool over your head if you don't know any better. So they'll just make up a price. Um, they, they do stuff like they'll charge you extra for your baggage too. If you have suitcases and it's like, they say it's too big or it's, um, or if you're bringing something that's like a, a, a weird shape or something like that, they'll charge you for that. They'll add an extra price onto that. So you gotta be careful with the, with the taxis, but you can take the bus. The bus is the cheapest way to travel. But I will say this though, the buses don't run on any type of schedule. It's, it's, a um, it's kind of like whenever it shows is whenever it shows and that's it. So you get to the bus stop and you just wait for the bus. There's, there's no time schedule. There's no nothing. <laughs> it literally, when the bus gets there, it gets there. And then it'll have like these numbers and everything on it um, to, to pinpoint the direction that it's going. And you pretty much just hop on the bus and you go from there. But that's how you pretty much get around. Awesome. Awesome, brother. Awesome. So next question for you, Mr. D, is now in terms of uh, food. So tell us about Italian food in this, brother. Um, is, is, is the food tasty, brother? And, and what was your favorite cuisine in Italy? Uh, so I'm actually, I'm actually a big pasta guy. Um, I guess it's stereotypical me coming from New York. I am into a lot of Italian food. So I'm really into pasta. So I had a lot of first there. Um, as that was, Italy was my first time trying macaroons, gelatos, um, things of that such. Uh, the food was pretty decent, but I, what you do, one thing you got to look out for is when you go to the restaurants, you got to look for the, the prices. If there's nothing with a price on it, I probably wouldn't go there because they have a tendency not all, but some of them have a tendency to exaggerate the prices for tourists. 
it doesn't matter if you're American, if you're Canadian, if you're whatever. If you're a tourist and they can tell, they'll exaggerate the price because you just don't know any better. So I would recommend going to a restaurant that has the prices listed and then going ahead and buying there. And now with that said, most of the food is generally good. I'll also say this, if you're American, uh, I'm not sure how the spaghetti is over there in the UK, but over here in America, the spaghetti has a lot of sauce. You know what I'm saying? So over there, by my uh, bed and breakfast, I uh, one night we stopped at a restaurant near the, the B&B and I ordered spaghetti. I was like, you know what, I'm in Italy. Let me order spaghetti and, and see, you know, it's gotta be the best over here versus where I'm from. And so traditionally, they don't use a lot of sauce at all. Um, so it was pretty much noodles with like a uh, like a hint of sauce on it. And so it, it didn't taste the best, but you know, out of respect, I just I ate the whole thing and whatnot. But I wouldn't recommending I wouldn't recommend ordering spaghetti um, if you're used to it dressed up a lot. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that. The food was primarily good. It's a lot of pasta. You get a lot of wine. Um, the first thing they ask you is, if, you know, what type of wine would you like? I'm a big wine guy, so I didn't mind. Uh, one thing I do like about the restaurants too is the seating. So they're real, they're real social out there. So a lot of places that I visited, especially in the daytime, they angled the chairs in certain streets because uh, the streets are pretty small. So you'll have restaurants on both sides of the street. And from one side to the other could be 20 to maybe 30 feet, but they angle the seats to look at each other. So everybody's kind of facing each other and whatnot. So it's a real social environment. And um, they bring out all your food and everything else. They bring you glasses of wine. They start drinking pretty early in the day, uh, especially Prosecco and whatnot. And um, the desserts were pretty good. The gelatos were fire. They were really good. Gelatos is like a form of a... It's kind of like a cousin to ice cream, uh, real smooth, real rich, real creamy. Um, they got a lot of like a lot of treats. They got calamari over there as well, which I like. And I'll say this: if you you gotta ask questions because I had ordered calamari one time, right? Because I'm I'm used to fried calamari, and I, I didn't ask the right question because when I ordered the calamari, they gave me raw calamari with the ink in it. So you got to, so it was a, it was a cup of pretty much raw calamari with the black ink in it and it was not fried. So when you do go in there and you ask for certain things, you got to kind of be specific. You got to let them know like, Hey, I'm ordering calamari, but I want it fried. Um, outside of that though, the food, the food was good. Uh, I'll say this as well, where I stayed at the, uh, the B and B, it was a little square and at night, all the restaurants, they set their tables out at night. Uh, they lit these candles. They brought the wine out. They had this guy uh, playing a little guitar. And everybody pretty much came out and danced and, uh, and just enjoyed themselves and had a good time. And in the morning, early in the morning, it turned into a farmer's market. So they had all types of produce and fruits and vegetables and stuff. Some stuff I've never even seen before. Um, and those people were really cool. I, I liked them. They were really humble. They were very respectful, very social. They wanted you to try stuff. Mm -hmm. You didn't even have to pay for it. They just offered it to you. They were like, here, try this, try this, try that. You know, Let so, me ask so this that was then. a really cool experience. Let me ask this, Baba. So uh, the, the, the cost of um, food then, Italy, uh, is it cheap or was it expensive? Nah, it was, it was a little, it was a bit higher, a little bit higher. So I'd say for... Let's just say this. If you ordered a burger somewhere um, and you're used to paying like probably like $10 for a burger, you will probably end up paying like $12 to $13 for that burger over there instead. So most things were 2 to $3 higher than what you were used to. So I would definitely say bring at least double the amount of money you're expecting to spend. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So, Brother uh, Bahamas, tell us about the Bahamas food, Brother. Is it, uh, what kind of food is there in the Bahamas? What was your, and what was your favorite cuisine there, brother, in the Bahamas? Oh, the Bahamas food was straight. I'm a big seafood guy. So you got a lot of like seafood salad, conch, uh, fish, salmon. 
um, some spicy food and everything else. A lot of it's pretty fresh. Um, I'd say cost wise, it's, it's, it's about the same depending on where you go, especially if you're around the resorts, it can, it can still be a little pricey. If you go out, um, just outside the edge of town and whatnot to a look to some of the local spots, it's pretty decent, but the food overall was pretty good. It's a mostly seafood rich environment. So you got to expect that. Um, there's a certain couple spots that will serve like a uh, chicken. They do have Burger King and like McDonald's and stuff like that. If that's what you're looking for, if you're not into seafood too much, you can step outside of that, but they have restaurants everywhere. You can all throughout a Nassau, um, there's all different types of cuisine that you can try. Again, they have fried calamari over there as well. Um, shrimp and all of that. You can go to Harbor Island and Dunmar Island and you can get all of that as well. And so, yeah, you got, you got a good variety of food and stuff like that. So it was all pretty good. Okay. And, uh, uh, is it pretty expensive or is it cheap in the Bahamas? I say it's somewhere in the middle. It can get, it can definitely get expensive. Um, if you're at a restaurant and say you order a plate and you ask for a uh, for a drink or something like that, you'll probably pay twenty dollars for that drink. Um, and you may end up spending like thirty dollars for that plate. Okay, okay. So now, brother, um, cost of living in Italy. When you when you compare the cost of living, brother, of Italy to America, is America more expensive than Italy? Is it more expensive or is it is it the same across both countries cost of living wise? Uh I wanna say because I've lived in I've lived in different places in in America. So I wanna say it, it, it depends because again you can find like a two bedroom for like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, and that seems pretty relative as far as the states as well. Um, cause you can also find prices for that same price. Uh, you can find apartments and stuff like that for that same price. So I say it depends on the location that you're looking at. Okay. Interesting, Baba. And uh, what about the Bahamas and, uh, America? Is America more expensive? Is the Bahamas more expensive or is it uh, the same across the board? Break it down for us, please. No, it seemed to, it actually seemed a little bit cheaper. Um, so I talked to one of the, uh, one of the locals in Nassau and they told me you could get a, a one bedroom for like $600. So I know in certain places in America, you might be able to find that, but it's a little more common. Um, but also at the same time, because of those prices, they're, they're not that readily available. So if you do come across one, if you like what you see, then you should probably snatch it up as quick as possible because they pretty much go like hotcakes. Okay. Thank you, brother. So now, um, safety, brother, right? Uh, very, very big for me, particularly as to what's going on in Colombia right now. Uh, is Italy a safe country, brother? Uh, was, was it safe in the nighttime, in the daytime, by yourself, in the, in the nightlife? Were you safe as a black man in Italy, brother? Break it down for us, please. Yeah, actually, to be honest, bro, Venice, Italy was one of the safest places I've ever been. Um, I mean, literally, the the most sketchiest guy I saw over there was some dude smoking a cigarette on a side street, you know, at like 11 o'clock at night. And that was it. And like I said, um, in San Marco, we walked the entire city. We were out to like one, two o'clock in the morning walking around. And then we seen we came across this this old white couple that was um they got lost and they had a little paper map. And so they were trying to like figure out where their hotel was and everything else. And we met them on a side street at like one o'clock in the morning. And so we took the time to kind of help them, you know, get their way and everything else. But they were fine. We were fine. Um, Every time we came out at night, it was perfectly fine. Uh, There was never once a moment where I felt like um, we were in any type of uh, immediate danger or anything. It, It was really chill. It was really cool. I, I got to say, that was one of the reasons why I, I took a second to look into um, property over there because everything was relatively safe. Awesome, brother. Now, uh, in regards to uh, what's it called? Bahamas, but safety as well. Nighttime, daytime, by itself, in the nightlife. Is, is it safe? Are you safe there, brother? Or are there some, obviously, some dangerous parts to break it down for us, bro? 
I, I'd say with, as far as the, the safety factor is concerned, I would put Venice, Italy over the Bahamas. And just because overall, um, I, I felt way safer. Uh, I felt more at ease in Venice compared to the Bahamas. You you are still pretty much safe in the Bahamas. It just depends on where you go necessarily, because you do have um, there are like certain pickpockers and stuff like that. Um, plus, if you go off the beaten path, you'll you'll get some kind of unwanted stares, uh, especially if you're by yourself and and everything else. Or um, I definitely wouldn't take again if you got like a lady friend or whoever with you. Um, I definitely wouldn't take her out across the path at night anywhere because again the men are aggressive and they can be aggressive and they don't they don't really seem, seem to care whether whether you're with her or not they're going to try to holler they're going to try to shoot their shot but for the most part it's it's pretty it's pretty good i would stay near the the tourist locations and stuff like that um some of the more visited areas if you're if you're not comfortable um with certain stairs or anything like that but Outside of safety, the only thing I can uh, speak on is um, financial safety because they will definitely, depending on where you're at, again, I want to say that they will try to scam you out of your money. So you pretty much have to be wise in that sense. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Incredible stream so far. So next question for you, brother, is racism, brother. Um, you know, racism in terms of racism towards you in Italy. Um, did you experience that? If not, did you experience any racism towards any other group of people? Uh, maybe the Africans from Italians, but break down racism, but as an overall uh, factor there, but for Italy, or, or, or did we answer that already previously? We we did, but I can I can go into it again. Um, no, no, uh, we, we asked. No, we asked already, but sorry, bro. Um, okay. My apologies. Um, okay. So, um, but culture. So. Um, Actually, so Baba, racism in terms of in the Bahamas, Baba, right? Would you say there's like a, you know, the mixed race, half black, half white people look down on full blooded, dark skinned black people? That kind of racism, you know, internal racism, colorism, is that a big thing there in the Bahamas? Or doesn't matter what shade of black you are, it's all good. Or are the white Bahamas people racist towards black people? Break down racism, Baba, for us in the Bahamas context. So I'll say this, starting with visitors and, and tourists alike, um, if you're coming off the, the plane, if you're coming off the, the ship, everybody views everybody pretty much the same. You won't find that amongst visitors alike. Uh, but what I did notice is, I guess if you want to say the, the, the class, the hierarchy of class, the lower tier jobs are more predominantly You'll see the darker tone uh, occupying those lower class jobs like shop sellers and stuff like that. Um, most of those people are pretty much paying rent for their booths and their boutiques and whatnot. The, the more upper class jobs are a little bit more mixed and, and lighter. Again, I never looked into why that's a thing. It, it may be a factor in that. I'm not exactly sure, so I'm not going to speak too much about it, but it is something that I noticed uh visually as far as how they interacted it was it was for me it was pretty much the same it was um it was all love it was all pretty much respect uh i didn't feel any type of way uh from them as far as the places that i went to from you know from the local from the local towns the shops and in, into some of the more higher end places uh again once i, I kind of got certain looks but once i spoke and I heard that american accent it was kind of like things changed. So I think it's more of, it's more class than anything, I believe. Okay. Okay. So, um, brother, culture. So Italian culture, brother, right? Is it liberal or is it conservative? Or is it in the middle of both, brother, from what you observed and what you saw out there in Italy? That one, so... I think it's more conservative in the way that they handle themselves as far as uh, respect and interactions and, and how they dress. Uh, I honestly, I didn't see anybody out there dressed all crazy and, and whatnot. Everybody dressed uh, presentable. Um, they had a certain respect about their looks and um, 
their mannerisms and stuff like that. Uh, again, the only thing that I noticed was with the the immigrants that came there. Um, and unfortunately, they came with a, a certain kind of level of entitlement, I, I should say, um, because just because of the way they approached you and they asked for stuff, they kind of demanded and they kept like pressuring you. Um, and just for me, the few times that I, I interacted with that, that was annoying. Um, so I can only imagine if you're dealing with that on a day-to-day -day basis. So it seems like a more of like a class hierarchy because again, once I, I, I spoke, it was like the doors open. And I'm telling you, I had guys dressed in three-piece suits with uh, Rolexes on, literally coming to me and just trying to like give me everything. And it's like, hey, do you want to try this? You want to try that? We'll, hey, we'll let you have this. You know, just come to our place, just, just visit us or, you know, da 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 da, da. They seem like they more, they were very interested in having your business and they were doing pretty much anything they could to be as hospitable as possible to get you to, you know, share your business with them. So as far as that, I think if you're a, a Westerner, you pretty much, you you almost got like a golden ticket, it seems, um, because they were willing to do anything to get your business with them. Okay. Interesting, Baba. And what about the culture in um, Bahamas? Is it a liberal culture or is it a conservative culture? It, it seemed like a, 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 a bit mixed. In, in certain areas, it was more um, matriarchal. I should say, uh, it seemed like that was the more, the, the higher presence there. Um, outside of that, everything else was pretty, was pretty copacetic. It was a, it was a really laid back, uh, somewhat conservative culture. But again, I was, the places that I went to outside of the tourist areas, they were more um, humble areas or lower class areas, so to speak. So they were more the um, the darker skin Bahamians and the the the, the mixed Bahamians, um, but they were all very they were all very much respectful. I, I'll say this one thing: they were very willing to speak about the the politics and such. If you asked them or you took time to talk with them, and um, and just talk about things with them, they were very open about that. Especially when I talked to the. Um, the people at the shops that were renting the little boutique and booth places, they would talk about the rent and that they pretty much were saying they don't want to be aggressive with tourists, but they almost have to be in order to pay for their 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 booths. Otherwise, they would get kicked out and they wouldn't have a way to pay, uh, feed their families and stuff like that. So it was it was kind of interesting. But uh, uh, may charcoal meaning what in in Bahamas? That's an interesting uh, statement there. But can you break it down for us, please? The aspects. Yeah, sure. Um, so, and again, I I could be wrong. Anybody can correct me on that if I am. But from what I noticed, it was more a um, the the women kind of had a certain say in certain areas, uh, so to speak. When it when it came to things, they seemed like they had a more dominant presence. Um, but again, certain areas, they were, they were more, they were all respectful, but they had, uh, it's kind of hard to describe. They had a more dominant presence, um, and, and whatnot. Uh, so it just seemed a little more matriarchal by just alone, how they met, how their mannerisms and how they interacted with, um, the people. Those were the ones that mostly, uh, seemed like they had a say in certain things, uh, than the men. Um, those are the ones I see more of uh, women, uh, shop owners um, in certain areas than I did see men. When I talked to a couple of the locals and whatnot, the the, the, the men were, were kind of like, okay, with, with how the women did their thing. And it was just the way it was. But again, it's, it's kind of, it seems a little bit complicated because the, the, the men are also very outspoken in certain other areas. So it just kind of gave me a, a, a mixed vibe, but I can't speak on it too in depth because I didn't get a chance to really to speak on that. But I do know they're very big into their politics over there. So they're very big into, into their politics. So I didn't really want to offend nobody because they, they seem like they can take offense to, to politics uh, pretty easily if you if you have a certain outlook on it. Okay. Thank you, bro. So, bro. But uh, when it comes to lifestyle, right, um, 
what kind of lifestyle uh, can Passable live in Venice, Italy, brother? What kind of lifestyle can he live there? Is it a high class lifestyle, particularly a brother working IT remotely, brother? Break it down for us. I think remotely, you will you would be you would be fine. Um, the internet was it was a little spotty in certain areas, but as far as the lifestyle overall, I think you would just be I think you would be just fine. Um, there was times uh, where it was it was super peaceful, uh, very easy to navigate. Um, plenty of little cafes and areas where you could go ahead and work and handle your business and and whatnot without any interruptions. Um, so I'd say I'd say if you were if you were to go, I would go somewhere between like uh, March and May, or the latter part of the year, somewhere around like September, September between November, um, where it's the least busiest, and you you would be just fine as far as if you were visiting, you would be just fine as far as going out there, catching a break, taking a little vacay, doing some uh, some remote work, you'd be just fine. Everything is pretty it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to navigate. Pretty easy to manage. I don't see you having a problem doing it out there. Okay. Interesting, brother. And what about lifestyle in, in Bahamas, brother, as a passport, bro? Break it down. I think remote work in the Bahamas would be more so, if you flew in, it would be more so at an Airbnb or um, at a hotel. Uh, most people stay at Atlantis. It's one of the biggest resorts out there. So I see most people probably doing their remote work there. Um, you have decent Wi-Fi. Uh, you do have decent Wi-Fi there at Atlantis and the, the local resorts. If you come in on the, the boat, I recommend coming on a newer ship because the older ships, they, um, they, they don't have, their Wi-Fi aren't the, the, the best. So I'd say if you do go in by cruise ship, I would take a, a newer boat if possible, and you would be just fine as far as remote work. Um, I don't think there's as many cafes that you could work at if you wanted to get outside of the hotel and find a nice little spot um, to work at and be by yourself. I don't think there's that much of an option because, again, everybody's there. They're partying. They're all over the place. You would pretty much have to like have some type of portable Wi-Fi, like a MiFi device. If you wanted to go off the beaten path, like to uh to like a local beach or something like that, to do some remote work on the sand. Okay, awesome, brother, awesome. Thank you, bro. So that's the first part of this stream, uh, the overall breakdown for Italy and Bahamas. So it sounds like both interesting countries. Now let's go into the woman part, brother. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a very important question, bro. All right, uh, it is probably, brother, the most important question in the history of mankind, bro. Okay. Um, this question, brother, is so important and so powerful, bro. It can turn water into wine and vice versa. Brother, a question so powerful, brother, it can stop a mutual right from destroying planet Earth. Brother, a question so potent and pure, it can make mankind walk on water like Christ did in the Bible, brother. This question is for you, brother, right now is, are the women in Italy, brother, and are the women in, in the Bahamas, brother, checking heavy for brothers and passport bros? Break down Italy for us first, please. Yes or no? All right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll break down uh, Venice, Italy. Um, like it, Again, uh, I want my ex to Venice, Italy, so I wasn't necessarily in that position to uh let's say explore but i i will say they were definitely checking me out my ex didn't know but as men you you know you kind of have an eye for that thing um and i'll say the uh <laughs> the italian women were definitely very much interested the the times that i did get to um kind of step out for a few minutes by myself um the ones that i talked to just for for information and whatnot they were very open they were um, very friendly. It was all smiles and whatnot. They were, they were, they were attractive. They were definitely, definitely beautiful. And I'll say this: most, I, I gotta say, nine out of ten, there, there were no overweight people there. Um, especially the women. They, I mean, they probably were between like 110, maybe 125 pounds at best. 
I didn't see locals, local Italian women. I didn't see not one overweight woman there. They were all very fit. Um, they were all pretty friendly. Friendly. Uh, they were all dressed modestly and whatnot. Um, they were presentable. They had a nice uh, attitude about them and everything. As far as the ones that I got a chance to speak to for a few minutes, and they they seemed pretty pretty interested. They were they were asking me as soon as I opened up to them, especially when I spoke a little bit of Italian. They were asking me all types of questions and whatnot, you know, trying to see where I was from, why I was there. And um, they they had that, you know, you know, when someone's kind of interested or curious about you, they have that certain smile. She'll have that certain smile on her face and she'll, she'll kind of move in a certain way. So I think, yo, if you're definitely, you know, you're single and you're, and you're looking for someone, um, it could definitely be a viable option. I'll also say this, outside of the locals, there were a lot of international women that did visit that were not Italian. And but get they, close to your mic. Get close to your mic. I'm, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Closer. Yeah, better, much better. Carry on, bro. International woman. Carry on, bro. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the ones that visited uh, Venice, Italy, were they seemed pretty interested as well. Um, I came across uh, through a couple of Germans that I've seen. I went to a, a couple main spots that were tourist areas uh, right along the water, along like the main canal, which is where most of them gather. And they seemed very interested. Uh, they usually travel in groups from what I saw, no less than like two, two women per group. Um, but they seemed pretty good. I, like I said, I met a couple of Germans there. They were, um, again, the, the Japanese and Korean, are heavy in that area. I don't know what the hell it is that they like in that area so much, but they are heavy in that area. They were the predominant, they were pretty much the dominant um tours in Venice. You know, in those areas. Yes. <laughs> in Venice, okay. bro. They were like the most dominant tours. Every group I saw, every crowd that I saw, I gotta say like 60% of that crowd was either Korean or or Japanese women, bro. So and they, they seem pretty, pretty curious and pretty interested. Once you went up to them and talked to them, the whole group would pretty much surround you. So <laughs> if you're not if you're not comfortable with, with getting surrounded like that and being asked multiple <laughs> questions, you, you might fall back. But if you're okay with that and you're good under the pressure, I think you'll 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 have a good time um opening up to them and them opening up to you. So oh and brother, get, the Bahamas. get close to your mic. Close to your mic, brother. It's, you're losing you, but I don't know what's happening. Maybe it might be a connection issue, but get close to your mic, brother, please. Yeah, can you hear me? My, but much better. Carry on, bro. Okay, yeah. In in the Bahamas, oddly enough, it's it's the same thing in the Bahamas. The, again, it's the Bahamas, so everybody's visiting. But there is such a large number of international people that are visiting the Bahamas, um, especially women. I'll say this when going to the Bahamas, there are um, there's a lot of groups of women that are kind of like, uh, I don't know, for lack of better words, they're going there on a girl's trip type vibe. So, I mean, if you're into that type of thing, go ahead and do your thing. But um, but again, that's where I met that Korean chick that I, I sent you a picture of. Um, she was very much interested. There were, uh, like I said, I met a couple Austrians. Germans, uh, a few of them that were from Australia, Canada, I mean, Canada. Um, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this woman said Canada. <laughs> I got a little, got a little tongue time for a second. I, I was literally visualizing all of them. So I got a little, I got a little mixed up for a second, but, um, but now, nah, man, they were, they were, they were pretty cool. And that's that's one thing I like about the cruise ships because you meet all of them on the most of them on the cruise ship. And so they're they're really open. It's honestly, bro, IP, I say take a take a try because it's like a different world. When you get on the cruise ship, there's no time zone, there's no nothing. It's just you and people from everywhere and they're just looking to get to know you and stuff like that. They want to figure out what work what place did you come from, where you you know, why are you here, yada yada yada. yada. All that good stuff. Um, so if you're even halfway social, you'll be just fine with meeting people. You just gotta go up to them, say hello with a smile on your face, and you're straight. And um, like I said, it, it was women from all over the place. We met a couple of Russian chicks. They were cool, and they honestly, they all seemed interested. You know, um, especially if you're you're sociable, you're open, 
you you have a, a certain look about you. Um, and I like to stay, you know, shaved up, well kept, keep a sharp look on my face. So if you're presentable and whatnot, you'll you'll do just fine, bro. Amazing, amazing, brother, incredible. So tell me, tell me more about um, Italian women, brother. Right, I want to know, right, um, if so. Obviously, you're with your girlfriend there. So the question I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear differently for Italy and Bahamas. So, so for Italy, brother, right, brother. When it comes to physical appearance, Italian women, physical appearance, brother. Um, are Italian women on average good looking? Obviously, I know they're known for their noses, or you know, maybe quite. <laughs> no long is it, it, is is that is that true despite that even though with their noses are they could look on average break down the physical of the italian woman brother uh <laughs> yeah so you 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 do got the uh you you do have a few with the 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 the, the nose the dominant nose trait I mean that's that's fine. That honestly, that really wasn't getting in the way too much. Um, but not all of them. You know, <laughs> double and try to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not a, not all of them have such a you know strong genetic feature. But um, but I gotta say it's it's mostly the petite or the the slim type uh uh build. Um, there were ones that you could you could tell that they worked out and stuff like that. But I gotta say they were they were really cute, man. They were really pretty. Um, brown eyes, green eyes, hazel, um, light blue, um, and whatnot. Have the long brown or you know long brunette hair. Um, they had a they had a bit of a uh, kind of like sophisticated look to them and whatnot. Um, they were they were pretty they were pretty decent and whatnot. They they had a certain um, upkeep about them, you know. Uh, the ones that I got a chance to talk to, like I said, for a few minutes, they had a soft voice to them, which which I like. Uh, I appreciate. They had a soft tone to them, very feminine, um, and they were very uh, respectful. They made eye contact, direct eye contact. So, if you're a bro that's not used to that as well, you should probably get used to it because they they lock eyes with you. You know, um, when they ask you a question and they and you're giving your response. They're locking eyes with you sometimes with a smile. So you know it was all good over here. Okay, so when it, when it comes to B Bahamas women, brother, right? Um, I'm obviously, but I'm guessing the majority of them are, are black women. So, but, but but when it comes to Bahamas women ratio, brother, uh, who can we meet there? Is it black women? Is it half black, half white? Is it you know white Bahamian women? Break down racial demographics, brother, for for Bahamas women. Yeah, the Bahamians were um uh it was mostly like um like the dang, how do I how do I say this? Um as far as like um this the shades, the different shades of Bahamian women, um you mostly come in contact with the the more chocolate shades of, of, of women, but there are ones that are there that look a little bit Taino. So that's if you, they, they kind of look a little native, like a native Hispanic. They have that, that, that look to them. Um, so like a, like a caramel to a um, peanut butter chocolate type uh, complexion with like uh, somewhat curly hair um, or like curly kinky hair and stuff like that. Um, I didn't see too many like white Bahamians because I didn't go to any of the, uh, the other islands outside of like Nassau, Harbor Island, um, Pink Sands and stuff like that. But predominantly you'll get between the, <laughs> the dark chocolate tone to the caramel, peanut butter, um, and a little bit lighter than the peanut butter type tone, if you, if you feel what I'm saying. Um, and they were all, they were all pretty respectable, but, um, it's a little harder to tell who I'll say this. It's it's a real bikini vacation type culture. Um, when you visit. So when you're in the tourist area, it's kind of hard to tell, you know, who's the more modest type of woman because everybody's there on vacation. So everybody's there in their beach attire. Um, but once you start going shopping and stuff like that, you go to the local areas, they, they got Piggly Wiggly and stuff out there. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a type of supermarket or a grocery store. Um, 
I'll, I'll say a couple, a few of those when I went to the store and whatnot. Uh, it seemed like they had a little bit of a westernized mindset when they looked at you, um, especially if you. Before we you get to that, that, so yeah, before we get to so as, as soon as I want to talk, ask you about about, about um, you know how, how good looking are be- Bahamian women, brother, uh, looks wise. I say they're they're, I I say they're um. They're attractive. I'd say you you'll find ones that are a little a little thicker is 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 somewhat of the average, um, depending on where you're at. But um, I'd say a little a little yeah a little thick I guess is the, <laughs> is, the, is the is the is the right term. You know it's the islands, so you gonna you gonna kind of find that. But you also do have a a good portion of them that they definitely work out. Um, they definitely work out. Um, and I'd say probably some of the ones that work out, you know, they might be, um, uh, dancers for like carnival or something like that. Cause they usually stay in pretty good shape, um, and whatnot, but yeah, it's, it's probably a, a good little mixed proportion. Um, you'll find some thick ones out there. Uh, you'll find some, you know, some, some, some hefty ones as, as well, if you're into that type of thing. Um, but you'll find some slim ones out there, some slim thick um you'll find those also as well typically around the shop areas like the the marketplace and everything else uh they were pretty average as far as build was concerned and those were the ones that i've seen that were pretty much on the um the darker complexion or they had like a taino type mix to them um like a like a hispanic native type mix to them um but yeah 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 okay thank you brother so now, brother, would you say Italian women are wifey from what you saw, from what you heard? Do you think that Italian women are a wifey woman for passport bros? And brother, keep it a stack, brother. Keep it 100 with me. So just, just I'll say this, surface level, they, um, they definitely appear to be. Um, surface level, as far as like modesty and mannerisms, yeah. Now, what are their political beliefs and stuff like that? You would have to take the time to actually, you know, talk to a few of them and get to know that. But off the rip, they seem very polite, very respectful. Again, as far as Venice is concerned, because that was the the one place that I, I focused at and I spent most of my time. They seem very polite, very friendly. Um, they seem pretty open. Uh, and again, I, I have to keep emphasizing this, learn a little bit of Italian, because that definitely seems to play a large part. Because when I talked to a couple of them, uh, I spoke, you know, English right up front, and they were still very respect- respectful and open. But once I started throwing a little bit of Italian in there, their faces lit up. I mean, their, their faces like lit up. And from what I was told, they kind of like that because you do get a lot of uh, Western tourists, unfortunately, that go over there with an entitled mindset and they come over there and they come off rude. So they're also used to that as well. So when you start speaking a little bit of Italian, it shows that you have interest in their language and their culture. So they have a, a somewhat a higher level of respect for you just for taking that extra step forward. So I think that would play into your, um, your best benefit when speaking to the women there if you're looking for wifey. Go in there with a little bit of Italian, and they're going to open up, and and pretty much you just go from there. Awesome, brother. So feminism in Italy, brother, right? Did you sense it within the women when you, when you were speaking to them, from what you saw on the TV, from what you saw in your surroundings, in the uh, culture, uh, of the cultural essence? Did you sense feminism, brother, in Italy, brother, amongst women? Keep your stack hundred, please. Uh, uh there may have been a, a hint of it i'm not gonna say it was it was all over the place but uh certain certain things you kind of can tell there was a little bit of an agenda being pushed um as far as when you walk around when you see certain billboards and stuff like that it was mostly geared towards the uh the women so i kind of took notice of that um certain ads and everything were predominantly for the women so again i took notice of that as well but like i said as far as their actions and how they talk to men it was very respectful 
every time I even when even when my ex was 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 with me uh, at the moment, whenever we talked to them or I talked to them, it was always very respectful. It was never you never felt like they were looking at you with a conden- condescending eye. They never like looked down on you like, oh, you're this, you're that. Um, it was always very respectful um, and pretty much pretty much friendly to be to be honest. So if it is there, it's not. It's not the same manner that it is uh, in the Western world, in in America or in the UK, um, as far as Venice is concerned. Okay. Now, moving it back to bah- Bahamas, brother, would you say woman in Bahamas, brother, are, are wifey, brother, wifey, woman, brother, and keep, keep it 100 with me, brother, if they are? And tell us why. <laughs> oh, man. That one, bro. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, bro, I am not sure, bro, because there was some ones that I came across that had that entitled mindset. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, geez, you know, they they were pretty, pretty, pretty outspoken. I'll say I'll say this. If anything, it's the outspokenness that you recognize the most because it's the the loudest thing there. Um, So you can kind of pick and choose where you want to go with that. I, I mean, that's. Hello? Are you there? Hello? It was, was that me? Can y'all hear me? Press the one in the chat if you can hear me. Press the one in the nice chat if you can hear me. Hello? Hello, hello. Are you there, D? Can y'all hear me, brothers? Press the one in the chat if you can hear me. All right, so y'all can hear me. Uh, D, are you there, bro? Did the uh, did, uh, did the matrix get you, D? <laughs> did the matrix get you, bro? Okay, hold on. Let me message him. Okay. Hold on, yeah. Mayday D. Damn. D, are you there, bro? Yeah, y'all can hear me, right? Hello? Uh, he'll be he'll be back. He'll be back. So how, how y'all liking the stream so far? Let me know in the live stream chat. How y'all liking the stream so far? Let me know in the live stream chat. How y'all liking the stream so far? Oh, classic, huh? Absolute classic. Awesome. Can we get some super chats flowing, some PayPal donations? Okay, D D's back. What's going on? Yeah, D? my bad, bro. Back. I'm not sure what happened. I think the Wi Fi or something cut out. No worries, brother. So brother, you, you, we were on the part about wife and up behavior chick. Why uh, you saying that they ain't wifey? Tell us why they ain't wifey. 
So <laughs> now nah, I, I ain't gonna say it because they all gonna come for me, but <laughs> but nah, there's they, there's certain ones they they're pretty well outspoken. I, I also say that I I met some some sweethearts out there. They weren't from Nassau, from what I got, from what I understood from them, is that the locals don't really like Nassau too much. It may have something to do with the fact that it's very uh, touristy. It's highly tourist area, so I think that may be part of the reason why they don't like it so much. So they live on the the outer islands that are close by. So if you can get a boat and ferry out there or something like that and explore the local areas and whatnot, I guess maybe check out Harbor Island or one of the caves um, and just take a time to to walk around and explore. You'll definitely find someone that's that's more suitable to what you want as far as a uh, friendly um more fit and uh more modest in in nature but as far as the ones in Nassau per se uh I, I I gotta say um they didn't fit exactly what I was looking for um and some of them had a certain attitude to them so I'm not really sure what's going on there but it doesn't seem to be like that throughout the other inhabited islands Okay. So, Bubba, going back to Italian women, brother, do you feel like Italian women are, are submissive and feminine from what you saw and from what you experienced with them, brother? Are Italian women on average submissive and feminine? Hello? <sighs> Hello? Hello? Bro, do you hear that? This, this has to be the work of the Matrix, man. Flipping heck, bro. Hello. Matrix, flipping heck. Uh, this, this is a matrix attack. D, you're on mute. Why are you on mute? Okay, D's on mute. Don't know. Okay, it must be, it must be a private issue. Let's give thee a minute. <sighs> Lipping heck. And doing these streams, man, late at night. I can feel it on my body. I really can. Right, let me let me bring D back in. You there, D? Yeah, can you hear me? It's because I, I got another freaking call, bro. I think that's what was interrupting the uh the audio. No worries, brother. So we were on the part where are Italian women submissive and feminine? Uh if not, let us know. If so, let us know. Break it down for us, bro. Hello? <laughs> oh, man. Matrix. Matrix. I'm, I'm out of the stream. <laughs> D. Can you hear me? Yeah, D. You there? Yeah, 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 I'm here. Hello? Dang, I don't know what's going on, bro. I don't know what's going on, brother, but okay, I hate you now, brother. So, but we, we were on the part where uh, Italian women, feminine and submissive, brother, in your opinion, break it down for us. 
Yeah, yeah. So like I was saying was that pretty much if you come in with a, a Western accent or I guess an accent that's not local, they seem very curious, very attentive. And it seems as though the feminine traits come out the, the most at that point. Um, that's as far as my experience, because every single one that I talked to and as soon as I spoke, uh, like I said, they, they were locked on. Um, they were very curious, asking me questions and everything else. And um, <laughs> they pretty much displayed everything that I was kind of looking Hello? <laughs> okay. All right, so I think there's some problems here. Okay. Hello, D. Okay. Shout out to Mr. Carl for the super chat. Thanks, IP, for all the work you do. Thank you, bro, for uh, uh, another super chat. Thank you, brother. Much appreciated, man. Second of tonight. Uh, thank you for all the support. Appreciate you, Carl. Let me bring in D again. What's going on, D? Are, are we good? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, what's going on, bro? What's going on? That's like the fifth time. Are we good? Hello. All right, D, let's wrap it up. All right, let's wrap it up. Okay, so um, thank you, D. Much appreciated for your time, bro. Um, Hello? Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, bro, what's going on, man? Yeah, no, like I was saying, I don't know. I keep getting this uh this call. Uh I don't know if it's uh, a contractor or what not, uh that might be calling me. I don't know why, but I think it's interfering with the audio. Okay, brother. All right, brother, uh, uh, one more interruption, we'll wrap up, okay? Because that's like the right, fifth bet. time and we need to um we, we got a schedule to run, brother. So but uh, so um so, bro, so what what about so you're saying that when you're, when you're a foreigner, Italian women are very pleasant. But, but let's say if, if you're an Italian man, there's problems there with, with Italian women. Is that what you're saying? I mean, the local guys, were, they seem pretty cool about it. Um, you know, they seem like they, they weren't too, too stressed. But I, I got to say that it just seemed a little bit easier as far as getting to know a woman if you were a foreigner. If you came with an accent, especially if it was uh, American or, or you're from the UK, you definitely garnered their attention a lot quicker than anything. So it seems like a definite plus in, in our category. Okay. Now, brother, what about uh, Bahamian women, brother? Are they feminine and submissive in your opinion? Uh, <laughs> it, it depends on where you go, to be honest. Um, not as much as the, uh, as far as Venice, Italy is concerned, but, um, again, I, I've met a few sweethearts out there. They were, they were pretty pleasant to be around. They had a soft nature to them, which was enjoyable, um, and whatnot. So if you're in the Nassau area, the main touristy area, again, the locals don't really like it too much um just because of what it brings in uh as, and i think that's predominantly because most tourists come there especially westerners with a certain attitude and it rubs off on the locals the wrong way so you may have to break through that barrier first in order to you know get them to give you a chance awesome brother so let, let me ask this right what kind of men do bahamas women like brother uh from what you've seen from what you've heard 
what kind of men do they on average like? I say be a be a, be a man, man. You know what I'm saying? Be a dominant man. Don't be afraid to um to approach them. Don't 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 be shy and 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 coy and all that good stuff. If you if you see someone that you're interested in, go up and talk to her. You know what I'm saying? Use your 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 accent to your advantage. You know what I'm saying? Um, do be do be curious to see where you're from. Come in with a smile. A smile goes a long way. Um, and you you'll be fine for the most part. But if you're confident, confidence is key. So you know, follow with confidence, and you'll be pretty straight for the most part. Okay, brother. Okay, awesome, bro. So now going back to Italy. Okay. Um, But when you were out there, right, how were Italian women dressing? I'm guessing you were there in the summertime, right? I was there more so it was it was turning into spring, so it was like semi warm. It was a little cool in the morning and um warmer during the, the midday. Uh as far as how they were dressed, it was very modest. It was honestly, I'm I'm big into fashion, so it was it was pretty a lot of them dressed pretty cute. They press they they dressed pretty stylish. Um, in the, in the mornings, they wore like these, um, these little, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Like these little cute coats, the, the little trench coats and stuff like that. They had the, the long flowy hair. Um, they, they, they wore, you know, somewhat fitted jeans, uh, with these, these nice little leather boots and stuff. They're big in the fashion. I'll say that they're, they're, they're big in the fashion. So if you go over there, don't don't go over there just all type of ways. Don't baggy jeans and all that stuff. It's a big turn off. Um, go over there, you know, dress business casual. You don't have to wear no skin tight jeans or anything like that. But wear something that that's fitted that looks good on you. If you're in shape, that's a big plus because it'll look good on you. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'll say that. So yeah, they were they were dressed pretty presentable. I I didn't see any. Any type of ratchet behavior, any type of uh, ratchet wear or anything like that, everything was was good to the eye. Okay, so 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 let me ask this right then. So, okay, so no, no three or four dressing that's great, brother. Now, what about what they were wearing in the Bahamas, brother? How were the women dressing there, brother? Were they just like three or fours on average? Uh, <laughs> so it's it. <laughs> It's a bit of a different climate in the Bahamas. So um, typically when I go there, it's the Bahamas. So it's always warm. Um, it's always hot. So everybody's dressed in, you know, shorts and tank tops and whatnot. Um, most women are kind of in, in bikinis or they're in beachwear of some sort. Um, you'll find a lot of women walking around in with a bikini top with a towel wrapped around their waist and whatnot. Uh, I will say this, though, I, I talked to many of them out there and they were kind of wearing the same attire. Like I said, a towel wrapped around the waist, bikini top. Some of them, they, you could tell they, they had that ratchet 304 behavior, that mentality. And some of them were super sweet, super nice. To be quite honest, I was more interested in the international chicks that were visiting because it was just so many of them. That I really didn't even meet that many Bahamian local women because there were so many international women visiting from literally all across the world. So it was, I was, I was genuinely curious more so about the international women than anything because you had so many different types of them and they were just very open. They, once you talk to them, they were just very open, um, very inviting. And uh, it was just, it was too easy not to talk to them and try to get to know them, so. Okay, so brother, uh, when I compare Bahamas chicks, brother, to Italian women, brother, brother this was like a, a black woman versus white woman thing, brother, right now, bro. And brother, the sisters ain't gonna like that. You, you're gonna put, you're, 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 you're out here prepping, right, or propping it's white Italian chicks, brother, over black Bahamian women, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't say that, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't let Umar, don't let Umar Johnson hear this, bro. He might come after us, man. <laughs> Yo, facts. <laughs> but um, uh, it, go on, Karen, go on. You want to say something? No, yeah. I mean, uh, I really don't know any other any other way to say it, man. It's just, and I, I, I'll say this: I've seen different 
uh, shades of Italian women. I've seen the olive skin. I've seen the tanned ones. Um, brunette. Uh, I've seen redhead. I've seen a couple, a couple blondes and whatnot. Um, but predominantly, the overall experience with most of them was very friendly, very inviting. Especially once you, uh, again, the key thing is once you went up to them. You know, once you went up to them, they're very social um, culture very social their whole environment pretty much is uh involved around being social with one another um being open being friendly so that definitely plays to your advantage you got to step outside you know your comfort zone if you're not used to that and just talk to them just approach them and whatnot and they they seem pretty open like i said they're respectable uh, respectful, they're friendly and everything else. Um, and they have a good tone about them. I, I didn't come across any obnoxious or any entitlement uh, or anything along those lines, so to speak. It was, it was, it was Gucci, you know what I'm saying? Um, and when it goes back to, when it goes back to, to the Bahamas, there, there's, I'll say this, you have a lot more Westerners visiting the Bahamas, therefore the influence is higher in the Bahamas than it would be Venice. Although you have a lot of people visiting there, the Western population of visitors is not as high as it is in the Bahamas. So I think overall through the years, there may be some of that influence that has kind of rubbed off on them. So you will get a bit of that. But that's predominantly in the the main island in Nassau. There's like the 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 the, the, the Bahamas has a population of like 400,000 people. Half of that lives in Nassau. You know what I'm saying? The other half is kind of scattered throughout the, the closer islands surrounding Nassau. So if you hop on a boat and take a trip, talk to the, to the locals that are in the other islands, like Harbor Island, go to Pink Sands and interact with the locals over there. And um, you'll find some women that are more suitable, most likely to what you're looking for. But as far as Venice, Italy, it, it just seems like, you know, uh, an easier pick as far as um, approaching them. Okay. Wow. So you're saying uh, outside of NASA, there's probably potential to find wifey. Uh, very unlikely. Is that what you're saying? Just yeah. I mean, I plan on going oh. back for for a more update, but it, it seems so. Yeah, man. So, so Baba, um, so would you say that Bahamas women are more Westernized than Italian women? Or is it the other way around? And keep us back. I'll say this: the ones that I, the, the 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 sweethearts. Again, going back to the sweethearts that I met, they when I talked to them, they were very open to you know cooking and everything else for their man and and doing some of the the things that we that were most more so looking for. Um, but you have to you have to sort through. You have to take your time and kind of like sort through through the ones that are there and and pretty much look for that you know what i'm saying um whereas when i was in in venice like i said the few times that i that i talked to them you know by myself and whatnot they seem they seem more easier i'll say that to get to know they seem easier to to they seem more inviting and easier to speak with and um get to know them a little better and they seemed like they were more curious and willing to you know take the moment and talk with you and and go further i honestly think if you if you got the confidence and and you talk to them in a respectful way and you you keep a smile on your face and whatnot it, i don't think you have a problem with with getting to know one and seeing where it goes from there uh whereas in the bahamas it, it may take you a little bit longer just because of the again the the how highly saturated it is with Westerners and Western uh, ideology, it may take you a little bit longer to find that person. Okay. Do you, do you feel feminism is a problem in, in the Bahamas, bro? I'm also a woman. Because, because of the proximity to the States, it, it, it might be, it might be. Mm. I don't think it's okay. as high as it is in the States. Um, but it could be a potential. You just have to take your time and, and vet. So whereas you would stay a week in, in, in Venice, Italy, you might have to stay two weeks or three weeks. If you have the time, stay a month in the Bahamas and explore. Awesome, brother. Awesome. 
All right, but let's get the phone lines open for the last couple of minutes. Brothers, you want to call in and ask any questions to, for our guests in terms of Bahamas or Italy? Now's the time. We're going to wrap up the stream very soon. Um, so, brother, uh, um, thank you for breaking it down, brother, for us. Uh, you'll give it a couple more minutes, brother, for brothers to call in and then we'll wrap up, brother. So, brother, uh, 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 out of both women, right, who are you going for and tell us why? Um, I don't know, to be honest, IP. So, in my personal experience here in the States, I've, I've met a lot of women from the Bahamas. Um, and I've met women from Italy. And I've met women from um, the Virgin Islands and stuff like that. And the ones that come here that do not get, let's say, uh, poisoned with the Western mindset, they are some of the most feminine and softest and just you just want to be around their presence to keep it up honey with you bro like not even you know nothing on a um a, a intimate type level you literally just want to be around them because they're so easy to be around they're so soft they're feminine they're respectable um and everything else they they listen to you they just have so many different attractive traits to them um and i love the island accent and they they cook and all this other good stuff um so it's very inviting you you pretty much lean more to that side but i've also met women you know from italy and some of them have the, the same characteristics but i think it comes down to preference to be honest amazing amazing thank you bro all right uh any any callers before we let d go now's the time we will give you a couple more minutes um, I'm gonna give you a couple more minutes. Awesome, awesome. Um, call in, brothers. Call in, call in. If you have any questions for our guest, okay. Call in. I'm gonna give you our brothers two minutes. Uh, if you don't call in, um, we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna let D go. And I, 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 and I want to react to an article that came out recently, but we'll, we'll, we'll wait for um, any callers. Um, I don't think there will be any callers today, D. Um, so, brother, do you have any closing questions or statements before I let you go, bro? Uh, yeah, I'll say this for anybody that is interested in going to either location. Um, with the Bahamas in mind, Keep in mind their hurricane season too. Uh, it's usually between like June and December, which oddly enough is their cheapest flights. So just keep that in mind. Um, the hurricane season kind of resembles Florida. It's not that bad, but the potential is there. So I would probably visit somewhere between the um, January and like uh, May, somewhere around there to get the best experience and whatnot. Um, and pretty much when it comes to Italy, when visiting there, the, the cheapest time is pretty much to visit between like March and May and, um, and more so towards the latter end of the year. So pretty much skip from May to like September to December. Uh, so that's pretty much the, the cheapest times to visit as well. And I say with Italy, if you go to Venice, just walk around. You don't need to take the gondolas. You don't really need to take the boats unless you want to visit the other islands outside of San Marco. But if you go to San Marco, just walk the entire city. Uh, I highly encourage you to walk the entire city. You meet so many different people. Um, the Like I said, the locals are super friendly. Learn a little bit of Italian. You do just great. Um, they're very inviting, so to speak. Uh, it's a very friendly environment, especially at night. Like I said, the restaurants, they bring all their chairs and they, they light all these candles. They bring the wine out and stuff. It's a, it's a very um, friendly and uh, social culture. Um, but yeah, and going back to the Bahamas, as far as activities, yo, go out to Harbor Island. Check out the restaurants. Go to um, Pink, uh, Pink Sands Beach. Check those places out. Visit some of the... Um, um, do some of the excursions and whatnot. Uh, if you go on a cruise ship, that's the best chance to meet people, uh, be open and talk to people because there's people in all different types of industries and whatnot that are there. So you might be able to, it's a high chance you can network as well. Um, 
yeah, so pretty much that's 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 it for right now. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, brother. So D, I want to say you I want to say thank you for your time, brother. Much appreciated, bro. Appreciate you for having me. I'm looking forward to having you in the future, brother. Uh, feel free to drop up, brother, and we shall speak soon, okay? Yes, sir. Awesome, brother. Peace out, bro. All right, brother. Stay safe. Take it easy, brother. All right, brother. That was D. Okay, that was D. Um, shout out to D for that breakdown. Now, I want to bring up an article. Okay. Uh, that's very, very interesting, okay? Um, and just want to show you. Hold on. Just want to show you, brothers, who is in, just who's in control of the West, okay? You know, uh, let me let me bring up the article real quick. Okay, look at this, right? Hold on. Okay, give me one second, yeah. <sighs> Flipping heck. Hold on, yeah? Give me a second, please. Okay. Okay, let's do it. So let me share my screen. Share screen. Present. Uh, share screen. Uh, let, me, let me make this a bit more. Hold on, yeah? All right, present IP, uh, present, share screen, share screen. Okay, look at this, right, look at this. <clears throat> so here's an article, right, from the internet. And it says here, UC Berkeley professor forced to issue Groven apology after telling students to get out of the Bay Area if you want a girlfriend, claiming everywhere else on the planet is better for that. <laughs> so we've got a professor, right, who is a, a passport bro. Why is he a passport bro? We see a, a, a white guy over here, okay? And we see this white guy with his Asian wife or girlfriend. <laughs> Looking at her face here, right, she's probably Thai or, or, or from the Philippines, okay? So he's clearly a passport bro. Right, he's he's a white passport bro, and he's telling his students, okay, to get their passports, stop dating in in the Bay Area, specifically America, like what I preach, and go anywhere else on the planet to find a girlfriend. So the the passport bro movement is picking up speed. More people are seeing that dating American women, dating Western women, is solely a waste of time. You got to keep away from them, okay. And he was forced to apologize, okay? Um, but students are drawing up a grievance. So this guy apologized, right? But the students here are still drawing up a grievance. I don't know what that means, but that, that's, that sounds pretty serious. You're telling me that, you know, let's break it down further, okay? So a Berkeley professor has been forced to apologize after insulting the woman of the Bay Area by telling a student asking for advice to get out if you want a girlfriend, okay? If you want a girlfriend, get out of the Bay Area. Almost everywhere else on the planet is better for that, okay? Um, you know, I'm not kidding at all. You'll be shocked by the stark differences in behavior of women in places where women are plentiful versus their behavior within artillery distance of San San Jose and San Francisco. So this guy knows that Californian women ain't no good, right? I, I think Californian women are the worst groups of women in America. I know New York women are pretty bad from what I've heard. I know Arizona chicks are pretty bad from what I heard, but nothing, nothing, right, um, you know, is more terrible than the dating a Californian chick. I think you you have reached rock bottom in your life if you are dating a Californian chick. Don't do it, okay? So here's his, uh, his comment over here on the article. 
he was forced to apologize all right um and they're still coming after him okay why is he apologizing for his opinion why is he apologizing for being a passport bro this just confirms me why i've been saying for a minute now the west is an oppressive regime against men in equality there's there's no such thing as patriarchy any woman that's screaming that is an idiot okay patriarchy does not exist in the west all right in fact i argue the west is a matriarchy i would argue that women run the west right now and they are oppressing men okay they don't want equality they want to oppress men okay how is he apologizing for his own opinion all he said was right go somewhere else if you want a girlfriend and that's a problem so so guess what brothers right they don't want you to travel right but at the same time they make it hard for you as an average man to date woman the average woman in the west isn't going for the average man and there's a lot of average men at these top universities uc berkeley ucla and, and uh, new york university and still right even though they know that the average dude ain't getting chicks they still get angry when they say i'm getting my passport at this point it's, it's an oppression regime right they want you miserable they want you simping they want you uh subscribing to these idiots uh, uh, of um uh websites and it proves my point right so it says here students describe right his comments as offensive and misogynistic how is that offensive and misogynistic that's what they do these liberals that is what these liberals do that's what these liberals do bruv they just make up a whole bunch of nonsense okay and and, and look looking at the comments over here all right the bay area is not where you want to meet your partner unless you're into that sort of self-hatred see everyone knows that california is not right you know the place to date and still and still right they they want you upset they want you miserable they want you hooked on prn they 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 want you hooked on of right because they want you a part of the simple economy so you can't date average women in the west they don't want you to travel to get a woman so what can men do at this point it's, it's, it's an oppression regime you know at this point it's an oppression regime look at this right she's a woman who has lived for four years in the bay area in the late 90s um she didn't have a boyfriend the entire time most of the straight guys her age only wanted to date asians <laughs> and you blame them okay and this guy says here dude uh dudes don't want to date a woman with purple hair and nose rings who knew facts bro facts californian women are some of the worst women right you can ever date so guess what they can't get their passport okay right it's a problem when they're speaking the truth it's a problem right when men want to you know achieve their freedom and go abroad at, at this point in time right right men are being persecuted in the west i don't give a damn what anyone says bruv Western women are not wifey and they're not girlfriend material. So this professor has every right to tell his students, go abroad, focus your, focus your time in the West, getting your education, right? Getting, getting your sets, getting into IT, getting your bag up, getting your paper up and go abroad. That's a game right now. Everyone knows that brothers. Everyone knows that. right it's crazy bruv it's crazy 
Theo, do you want do you want to call in, brother, and and and, and chime in on this, bro? It's, it's up, up to you, bro. Right? You know. But I, I'm I'm letting y'all know, brothers, that it's war out here in the West to the point where their friend, the friend in this guy, bro, a professor that's been working at this university, right, since what 1998? Let me see. Let me see. Since 1998, for telling his students go abroad and get your passport. You, 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 you can't blame him, bruv. You can't blame us men. I have met California women in the UK. California women are some of the worst groups, right, uh, 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 when it comes to dating, right? Good luck to any man that's foolish enough to wife up a Californian chick. It won't end well. Any woman from hyper-liberal states, good luck. It won't end well. This is insane, bruv. Shout, shout out to, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Theo Waff in the building, the legend for the $5 super chat. Women can say they sleep with 300 men, do, well, do OF and hate men and no problem. You go get you know? Men say, uh, avoid such women and there's a problem. Facts, bro. That, that's an that, 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 evil world we're living in right now, bro. An evil world. That is an evil world we live in right now, bro. They they want men wifing up three or fours. They want men taking BS from women in the West. They don't want y'all to travel, bruv. And that's sick. That's sick. They want men, right, to, to you know, uh, you know, to, you know, to wife for these these women with, with high body counts nah bruv not me not me i tell women with high body counts keep far away from me i get out the cross in right holy water and and throw it on on, on them to keep that demon away from me brothers if i hear bruv you ain't gonna tell me i can't get my passport you ain't gonna stop me from traveling and you ain't going to stop me from spreading this message to every other man on this platform. Men must get their passport, must travel, must get into IT, and must never, ever date or touch a Western woman anymore. We done. No more SEX with Western women. No more dating Western women. Okay? No more, you know, uh, 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 being around Western women. No, no, no. It's foreign only. So shout out to that professor for keeping it real, right? And you, you can tell he's he's a passport bro. He's looking look at him with his uh with his Asian Asian wife or girlfriend, you know. And I, I'm seeing I'm, I'm seeing a lot more white men with Asian women. And can you blame him? Can you blame white men for going Asian? Because right now the white woman she's fell off big time. White woman fell off big time. How are you apologizing for an opinion? Free speech. It's crazy, bruv. But, but, but women can be passport sis, go to Jamaica, go to the Bahamas, go to Barbados and get their, you know, uh, you know, get ran through and not a single peep. Imagine if imagine if it was a woman, right? And he said to a woman at university, go abroad and date men. There'd be no backlash nothing when a man says it it's a problem nah bruv nah it don't sit right with me man it don't sit right with me brothers keep getting your passports keep traveling right keep 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 elevating because it ain't a game it, it ain't a game anymore they're coming after men. They 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 hate men in, in the West right now. Right? And, and and that's why I was saying the other day, at some point in time, 
we're going to have to defend ourselves and, and fight back against this, uh, this horrible culture that's going on. It's too liberal. And when you're too liberal, you lose common sense. You know? And that's why I'm pushing brothers. Brothers got to stop dealing with Western women. Don't even smash them. And to, to the young brothers at uh, university, that are entry-level jobs, keep pushing forward, man. Get your passport. Travel. Become passport bros. We done, we done with these chicks in the West. We done completely. No more Californian chicks. No more New York chicks. No more Oregon chicks. No more Arizona chicks. Foreign only. How are you, you going to apologize for an opinion? An opinion? Because he's saying, you know, he's telling a student of his right, you know, get your passport and date anywhere outside of the Bay Area. I mean, he's speaking facts. You see, more men are becoming aware of their options. More men are realizing that Western women ain't no good. Western women ain't no good. And I've been preaching that for a minute now. I've been preaching that. I want to see a day where no Western man, right? No Western man is with a Western chick. I want to see all Western men with foreign women. I, I can't wait to see that day. And that day will come when, because these Western women, they keep telling on themselves, high body counts, been around the block, been ran through, got belly piercings, got tattoos, blue hair, looking, look, they got nose rings, they look like flipping clowns, bruv. So I'm, I'm going to keep pushing this movement. And I hope the professor keeps pushing the movement privately. But something got to be done about, you know, this culture. I don't know, but we need to fight back against it, man. Because I'm sick of it. Keep your head up, professor. Right? Keep your head up. You're going to be all right, man. And shout out to the professor for getting his, uh, his, 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 uh, his wife here. You know, great job. And you can tell that she's she's foreign. She's not American. She ain't she ain't got that American look. She's got that foreign look. Look at her. Look, look how she's dressed. She ain't showing her her chest. She's not dressing too provocatively. She's got she looks fresh, right? She's definitely not American. She's definitely foreign. And you can't blame the dude. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Get your passport, get into IT, book your IT consultations with me. You're going to be all right, man, because it ain't a game anymore. All right, man. Okay, so um, great, great stream, man. Great stream. Um, you know, great stream, brothers. Shout out to our guests, shout out to all the brothers here. The super chats, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, this was a great stream, it, it, it definitely was. Where's everyone listening in from? What country, what city, what, Mustafa, Mustafa, is that in Star Wars? I knew it, I flipping knew it, I, I just searched it up, Mustafa, <laughs> that's also, that's also a Turkish name, Mustafa, 
Mustafa. Awesome, man. Shout, shout out, Theo. Shout out, Earl. Owens in the chat. Tacoma, uh, Washington. Awesome, man. Hey, I feel the Joker. <laughs> uh shout out to um carl out there in chicago land awesome man hey shout shout shy town shout shy town man you know shout shy town where's everyone listening from cool cool live stream we uh, we back on monday passport bro show don't you miss it don't you miss it? Don't you miss it? Uh, we back. I'm back tomorrow, actually. For <laughs> yeah, y'all see my stream, right? Let, let, let me post in the chat. Don't you miss the stream, okay? Uh, tomorrow, all right? Don't don't you miss the stream? Hold on, hold on. Don't you miss the stream? Uh, let me bring it up. International passport. It's gonna be some real streams. It's it's me speaking tomorrow. It's gonna it's gonna be some real hard hitting talk, man. You know that that real talk from twenty twenty two that y'all been missing, man. Right? Don't you miss it? Am I uglier than Shrek? The making of a passport, bro. Right? Episode one. Episode one. Okay. That's me going through my life. That's only episode one. There'll be episode two, three, four, five, who knows? But everything that, that's happening in my life that has accumulated to me being a passport, bro, I'm going to speak on it tomorrow. Straight from my heart. Straight from, the, straight from my soul, brothers. Because right now, we're we, we going full throttle into being a passport, bro, man. We got the IT game unlock, the crypto game unlock. Come soon, the crypto game comes soon, right? We got the mental game unlock. We got we, we got the gym game unlock. You ain't playing no game in the gym. Uh, I'm studying every day, you know. Self improvement, self improvement. And when I finally leave the UK, totally, I, I'm I'm a better man. I I have value. I can spot three or fours. I can spot wifey. You know? Right now, down the West, I'm a lone wolf studying self improvement. I'm on a bus every day. I see couples. I see the nightlife. It doesn't phase me. I got a mission the mission to save brothers, me and Theo. IT, crypto, gym, IT, certs. That's the mission right now for me, self-improvement in the West. I don't day in the West. I use the West's resources to build myself up. I don't care anymore about the West. Let, let it implode while we are abroad, while we have our assets. You know, we got brothers out there in Orlando, Florida, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. We got brothers out there in Scottsdale, Scottsdale, Arizona. That's, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. That's what's up, bruv. New York, Florida, awesome, bruv, awesome. We coming for the throne, man. We ain't we ain't playing no games, man. We 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 uh, uh we just done Italy and Bahamas, two new countries for you, passport bros. This this channel must do every country. Every island, I have to do it. I, I've got, I've got to give brothers that intel to prepare them for the world, man. Middle East, Africa, Australia, Europe, the Americas, the whole nine yard, man. Asia. This channel has to give you every country in existence. That's the goal. That's the plan. When I retire. Once that happens, I don't know. But I'm feeling it on my body, man. I'm feeling it. Right? All these late nights, it starts to catch up with me. IP getting old. IP getting older. 
right? I'm not a young man anymore. So I don't know how, how long I can keep doing these late streams, but I pray to God for strength, man. I can need it. We got to keep pushing, man. I'll wake up tomorrow, study. Self-improvement, 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 self-improvement. I don't care about the West no more. It ain't my home. My home abroad. You know how the West treated me? But we're going to be all right, man. We're going to be all right. So great, great stream. The guests, shout out to you, D. Much appreciated, bruv. Much appreciated, man. We got work to do. We have work to do. <sighs> All right, man. Brothers, it's been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. Um, I hope you brothers have a great weekend. And I'll see you brothers tomorrow. Peace out.